So hello everybody, we're gonna go ahead um, and go through some housekeeping rules uh, before we get started here. Um, for attendees, thank you so much for attending. My name is Adrian Flores. I'm part of the WACAC. Um, they can also work at Carmen High School's of Science and Technology as well. Um, so for everybody logging in as an attendee, questions, if you could just put those in the Q&A, all questions will be answered at the end of the session. Um, the session will end promptly at 345. So we apologize if we don't get to your question, um, but we just have to make room for the other sessions. Um, and just a reminder, please make sure you go back on the WACAC website and sign up for some more um, of these sessions. They're very informative and also a lot of colleges um, have a lot of opportunities, a lot of scholarships, um, as well as a lot of great information um, to offer you guys. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Tara from Marquette and we will get started. Thanks so much, Adrian. Hi, everyone. I'm Tara Malarkey. I'm a senior admission counselor at Marquette University here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and I want to sincerely take, take some time to thank you for, for joining me this afternoon. Um, I know many of you are not in school yet, and I am in Wauwatosa currently, where it is 80 degrees and sunny. And I recognize that there are definitely things you could be doing instead of sitting um, and joining me for the next 45 minutes to learn a little bit more about Marquette. So thanks so much for taking time to be here. Um, just so you know, I'm a senior admission counselor at Marquette. Um, I've worked in admissions for six years, um, and I'm also a Marquette graduate. Um, I'm an extremely proud graduate of the exercise physiology program. I worked as a physiologist for several years becoming, before coming back to work um, as an admission counselor at my alma mater. Um, I grew up in southeastern Wisconsin, so I have a lot of love um, and, and definitely drink the Kool-Aid for southeastern Wisconsin and for Marquette in general. So I'll go through um, our, our information session and, and presentation for a new prospective incoming freshmen. If you have questions, definitely please utilize the Q&A function. You can definitely ask any question. Um, if we don't get to all of them, I'll go ahead and reply via email afterward. Um, but if there are multiple questions on the same topic, we'll go ahead and try and get all of those answered um, before we're done. Um, so I will go ahead. Um, I want to share with you while I have sort of your attention, uh, um, some of the things that I think are particularly special about Marquette. Um, a little bit more about the types of opportunities that our students have both inside and outside the classroom. Um, and then, of course, more about the application process, which many of you have perhaps started already or are thinking about starting to Marquette. So before we go into all of that, I wanna make sure that I share with you um, a little bit more about our students um, and, and what makes us special here. So Marquette is a Catholic Jesuit institution. We're founded by the Jesuits, which are an order of Catholic priests about 500 years old. We're medium sized we're located right downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, and we have, um, again, the best of both worlds, sort of um, the, the best of a, a big institution where we have research opportunities for our students. Um, we're in an urban environment. We also have a small school feel in that we're really medium sized. Um, just about 8,000 undergraduate students um, are here at Marquette. So we have about 12,000 students total. And we do have a graduate school, a law school, and a dental school as well. Um, but our students are, are really diverse. They come from all over the world and all over the country. Yes, we are located in Milwaukee. Yes, many of our students come from Wisconsin. Um, but for me, what I really liked about coming to Marquette is that it is a national institution. I met people from all over the country. Our students come from all 50 states. They come from 80 countries around the world. We study about 110 different majors here on our campus. So I loved the opportunity to go to school fairly close to home in an environment that was very different from where I grew up. Um, but I got to meet people from all over the place and really expand my world view. That was something that was really special to me. Um, I was also surprised to learn, even though I grew up in Milwaukee um, or in a Milwaukee suburb, that um, there are seven Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered here. Marquette has a huge uh, presence in the city with our, with our local companies. We have lots of alumni that work for some of these local companies and of course alumni all over the place as well. So we have students on campus. We have a really strong community feel, but we have a really strong network, um, which really became present to me. And, and I really realized that um, once I graduated from Marquette and was looking for a job, um, definitely really a lot of pride. So again, we're a Catholic Jesuit institution. Uh, some of you might be familiar with this. Some of you may have never heard the word before. There are 28 Catholic Jesuit colleges um, around the country um, and, and basically founded on two main principles, things that we really take very seriously here at Marquette. The first is education of the whole person and the second is service. So while our students um, aren't required to participate in service. This is just something that they like to do or something that they're encouraged to do. Uh, some of you might have to participate or may have 
have to complete service hours before you even graduate from high school. But this is just something that is a part of our community. It's a part of the fabric of our, our education. Our students logged uh, over half a million service hours last year alone, um, which I don't know if that's something to brag about, but I think it's really a pride point of our students that um, it's not required. This is not something that we're forcing students to do. It's just who we are. We want to give back to the Marquette community, the city of Milwaukee, our country and the world. Um, it's a really important piece of, of a Jesuit education. Educating the whole person is another thing that is really, really important and really valuable. Um, while our students can study whatever it is that they like to within our seven colleges, we do require our students participate in something that's called a core of common studies, which is courses over nine subject areas throughout your four years at Marquette. And these are classes in things like math and science and English, but also history and philosophy, theology, diverse cultures, so on and so forth, because we really, truly believe that that gives our students a good foundation for their education. It helps teach them how to think, not necessarily what to think. Um, and as St. Ignatius of Loyola said, the founder of the Jesuit order, um, we really want to, students and people to go out and set the world on fire. Definitely not literally, but figuratively. We want our students to be change makers and difference makers. We want them to be passionate. We want them to study something that they really love. Um, and we want, we want them to feel empowered to go ahead and, and take the tools that they've obtained during their time at Marquette and, and make change wherever it is that that's meaningful to them. Um, so we are really proud to be a Jesuit institution. Um, about two thirds of our students identify as Catholic or major Christian religion. Um, there is no requirement whatsoever for our students to be religious or to be faithful at all. We support students of all faiths here on campus. Um, and we do have a, a sort of a university campus center or a, 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 a what's it called? Um, no, I'll, I'll think of it later. Um, but we have a, a campus ministry center where students can come um, and they can kind of find ways to practice their faith or deepen their faith if that's something that is meaningful and important to them. Sometimes students will ask me too about the theology requirement. Um, for those that aren't familiar with, with theology or with Christianity, we do um, require students to participate in two theology courses regardless of their major during their time at Marquette. Typically the first is an introduction to Christian theology and the second is a theology elective. Um, an introduction to Christian theology is usually the history of religion, the history of faith. There's a lot of room for discussion in these types of classes too, which I think um, really, again, opened my mind during my time at Marquette. Um, so we talked about um, a direct entry institution that we, um, we allow our students to participate in the core of common studies, but now as a direct entry institution, I wanna share as well that we have um, a, a, an opportunity for students to apply and be admitted directly into the college in which they would like. So we have seven undergraduate academic colleges at Marquette, all with direct entry, and this includes nursing and health sciences and business, communication arts and sciences, so on and so forth. This means that if you know what you want to study when you're applying to Marquette, you can apply, apply directly to that major, directly to that college. If you're admitted, you're in right away freshman year, you'll begin taking classes in your chosen major right away freshman year, in addition to your core of common studies. Um, but for many of the students I work with, they say, hey, Tara, that sounds great, but I have no idea what I want to do. Or I think I know, but I'm not really sure. Um, and to you, I say, that's okay. Don't stress. Um, I work with students all the time. And, and I can honestly say the most popular major at Marquette is undecided, or we call it multi-interested here because we truly believe that students have so many interests, they can't pick one. Um, but the second most popular major is I'm changing my major. Also incredibly common. We want our students to feel supported. We want them to feel um, allowed and encouraged to sort of follow their passions and discover and discern what's really uh, meaningful to them. Um, and with a hundred different majors, we have a lot of opportunity for students to change their minds. It is possible to major and minor across colleges. It is possible to change majors during your time at Marquette. It is possible to double major um, in the same college or across colleges. Um, however, at this time, it's important to know it is not possible to transfer into the College of Nursing. Um, it is the most competitive, smallest college that we have on our campus, um, and we are a direct entry institution only for new incoming freshmen. With all of the other colleges, however, um, it, there is certainly a possibility to transfer and, and change your mind. Typically, students who are completely multi-interested or undecided come into the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, that is home to the largest concentration of majors. We have humanities and sciences and social sciences and languages are all housed there. Um, and we also have phenomenal advising across the university. Every student that comes into Marquette is assigned an academic advisor in your college. And you're actually required to meet with your academic advisor every semester before you even register for classes. 
This is a really good opportunity to have those discussions. Do I like what I'm studying? Am I doing well? You know, I took a philosophy class last semester and I really enjoyed it. How do I pick up a minor in philosophy? Um, or, you know, I want to study abroad or I want to change my major. How can I do all of these things? Um, I had a really phenomenal advisor and had a really, really good relationship where I could have those open discussions. We could talk about um, some of the concerns that I had or maybe studying abroad, uh, a ton of different opportunities to learn through my advisor and I truly felt supported. Um, a lot of students will ask about the average class size as well. Um, and I'll go ahead and answer eventually um, how to apply for the College of Nursing um, when we talk about the application process for someone that asked. Um, but um, academic advising is, is incredibly popular. Um, average class size is, is just about 22 students. Um, the student to faculty ratio is 15 to one. So it really is a small, medium sized campus. We do have some larger lecture halls um, and larger lectures. This, uh, this fall, um, those have all been de-densified. So no more than 50 students in a class. Um, but typically if you're taking a larger class, you'll also have a discussion or, or a lab section with that as well, where the professor will lead you through a discussion in a much smaller setting. Um, tutoring is available and highly encouraged and heavily utilized by our students, um, typically led by current Marquette students that have already passed that class and gotten an A in the class the year before. Um, so just a really, really good educational environment, um, which is which was the main reason why I was seriously considering Marquette, but definitely not the reason why I chose Marquette in the end. Um, and that is, is because of our location and because of people. I'm extremely proud to be from Southeastern Wisconsin. I think Milwaukee is, is one of the best places in the whole world. Um, I have been a lot of places on earth and I think Wisconsin has, has genuinely the nicest people. Um, in my opinion, Milwaukee offers the best of both worlds, again, in that we're medium sized, about a million people, um, but yet we also have that small city feel. Transportation is incredibly easy. It's really easy to get around. It's easy to navigate. There's a ton of green space. Um, there's very little traffic. It's just, it's a place where you can really feel um, comfortable and expand and your, your worldview and, and, and learn a lot about yourself, but yet do it in a safe environment. For me, it felt a, like a really great, great place to spend at least four years. I have um, a really awesome aerial view of the city of Milwaukee looking due east. Um, Y'all should be familiar with this lake, the blue body of water, just a mile and a half from our campus is Lake Michigan, the greatest of all of the Great Lakes. Um, and you can kind of see down the middle of the street there, that tree-lined street with red trees. That's Wisconsin Avenue that bisects our campus in half. And it's one of the busiest streets actually that runs through the city of Milwaukee. That runs all the way to the Milwaukee Art Museum um, and to the Betty Brin Children's Museum. So that runs all the way east to the lake, again, just a mile and a half. Um, uh, and you can kind of see where we are in relation to the rest of the city. Again, downtown is to our east, lots of opportunity for jobs and for internships. Um, the majority of our students participate in at least one internship or clinical experience of some kind before they graduate from Marquette. Some programs require a, an internship or clinical experience, um, but most encourage it. And a lot of students will have a lot of experience before they're out in the real world um, looking for jobs. The third ward, for those of you that are familiar or aren't familiar, is our Warehouse Arts District. Um, that is uh, just a little over three quarters of a mile away from campus. Um, it's also close to the Intermodal Station, for those of you that may be commuting in from Madison or from central Wisconsin. Um, that is where the Badger Bus, the Mega Bus, the Amtrak train station, the Greyhound all come into, um, and I think Coach USA as well. So if you're looking to get to Marquette or get to campus, from home, there's a lot of really easy ways to do that through the, via the intermodal station um, and, and commuting that way. Um, a lot of students will also take the train down to Chicago uh, for maybe internship opportunities or just to go and explore and, and, and expand out beyond our campus borders. For those of you that are into sports, Go Bucks. Um, the Pfizer Forum, again, is a little over a half a mile from campus. And that's also where the Marquette men's basketball team plays. Um, so hopefully the men's basketball team will be playing there this fall, um, though for this um, early fall, for this winter, I guess, um, for the early fall, the Big East has, um, has suspended sports. So hopefully we'll get a little bit more information about winter activities like basketball um, a little bit later. But this is kind of Milwaukee. This is where, we're, we, where um, our, our beautiful city, uh, tons of opportunity. I should mention here, all students get a bus pass with tuition, um, a county bus pass, which takes you anywhere in the county. Um, and students who live within a 30 mile radius of our campus do have the opportunity to commute from home if they so choose. Um, you can kind of see where our campus is located here within the city of Milwaukee. Um, and again, that tree lined street, Wisconsin Avenue, that bisects the campus in half. 
On the south side of Wisconsin Avenue, that's kind of the academic side. That's where all of our undergraduate classes are located. You can kind of see there aren't any roads or streets that go through there, which to me felt like a truly classic, quiet college campus. I loved the quad feel. I loved walking through there, feeling like I was on a, a sort of a secluded college campus, sort of stepping across Wisconsin Avenue and being in the middle of the city. It really, again, offered the best of both worlds. On the north side of Wisconsin Avenue, that's um, our residential side of campus. That's where students live and play. Um, we have nine residence halls. And again, all students are required to live in residence halls for both their freshman and sophomore year, unless they're commuting from within that 30 mile radius. So for those of you outside the greater Milwaukee area, we do ask students live in residence halls on campus and that's to build community. And we do have an extremely tight knit campus community. Um, Marquette isn't a walled or a gated community or a gated campus, so we definitely are a part of the, the, the Milwaukee city of Milwaukee, the community, um, but we do have a very sort of strong campus presence and campus feel. Um, you can tell when you're on Marquette's campus, but yet you can freely walk in and out of campus. And there are people um, who don't, who aren't affiliated with Marquette who, who pass through our campus, whether it's the, through the bus or whether or not they're um, utilizing the Starbucks on campus or whatever it might be. There's a lot happening in, in our urban campus. Just to the west, or sorry, to the left, to the north um, of, of our campus is technically this off-campus residential area. So while I said we require freshmen and sophomores live in residence halls on campus, about 96% of our students do live within the campus vicinity all four years. So students are, are allowed to commute. They can commute all four years if they so choose, if they're from the Milwaukee area. Um, but we do have a lot of students that live in, in this campus community. Um, the buildings with the teal roofs um, on the left side of the screen there, you can see those are university owned campus apartments. So, so juniors and seniors can move in those, those buildings there. And then that neighborhood just to the north is technically off campus. That's, you know, the majority of the people that live there are, are Marquette students. So it really is a tight knit campus community. Um, everybody that you walk past, I, you, know, you can see, or you see Marquette students everywhere you go, which I really, really loved. We have a ton of opportunities for our students, both inside and outside the classroom. Um, but I think one of the things that I really, really loved about Marquette was just the network of people here. This um, building, this picture of this building is the um, 707 Innovation Hub. Um, and it's basically a space for all students to utilize who are entrepreneurial minded. Um, any student can utilize the space. We have job fairs that are hosted here. We have um, mentor hours that you can come and, and work with somebody who works in a particular industry in the city of Milwaukee or elsewhere. Um, there are printers and 3D printers and sewing machines and meeting spaces for students to use and to dream and to think and to create. Um, it really is a place of collaboration and a place of sort of um, inventing. And that is what I loved about this place, the collaboration, the community community is so supportive. Everyone that I met at Marquette is so passionate about something and not necessarily the same things, um, but that passion is contagious. Um, and that is, that is what makes a Marquette education particularly special is that there are tons of opportunities beyond the classroom that I think students really utilize and, and take advantage of. I have phenomenal re relationships with my professors and with my advisors, and I truly believe that the professors are here to serve the students. They care not just about um, weeding out students from particular programs. They care about students um, doing well in their programs, about learning, about becoming passionate for, for these particular topics that they're teaching and that we're studying. Um, and that, again, creates an environment of collaboration and, and excitement, which I really liked. It is definitely an exciting place to be on campus, especially um, hopefully um, this fall and winter for a Marquette men's basketball game. This was one of the first games in the Pfizer Forum where the Marquette men's basketball team plays and the Milwaukee Bucks also play. Um, but we are really, really proud of the fact that our community is so involved and so engaged. I mentioned earlier that service is really big, but we have over 300 student organizations on our campus. Um, and so whatever it is that you wanna get involved in, from politics to student government to um, cultural organizations, and Dance, dance troops or music or acting or theater, um, sports, anything, you can definitely continue that on our campus. In addition to pushing yourself outside your comfort zone and trying something new. Um, we're really proud of the fact that we've got Division I Athletics right here um, uh, on campus um, and, and nearby. We have club and intramural sports as well, of course, but then a lot of additional things for students to participate in. As I mentioned, anything from political science or 
political organizations, um, all the way to Greek, Greek life. Um, fraternities and sororities comprise about 12 to 15 percent of our student body. Um, and while we do have Greek life present, I should mention too that we have a delayed rush system. So um, students can't participate or get involved with Greek life until their second semester of freshman year, which I really, really loved. It gave me an opportunity, me as a student, an opportunity to sort of get my feet wet, to make sure that I was doing well and rooted in my academics. Um, and then from there, I could really sort of push the envelope um, and try new things. Um, I got involved personally with um, campus ministry. I led some freshman retreats. I got involved with my residence hall association. I got involved with um, student government. I got involved with um, being a tour guide. I was at a campus job as being a student tour guide. Um, I also did a lot of service um, and played club sports and intramural sports. Um, fun fact, actually, I had an intramural uh, sand volleyball team that is a spring sport and our first two games were snowed out, um, but it was fun nonetheless and we had an awesome time. Um, but I also participated in a, a trip card called Mardi Gras, which is a student organization. It's an enormous student organization that began after Hurricane Katrina. Um, and it's still going incredibly strong on our campus. Um, Marquette students have been going down to New Orleans since Katrina to participate in sort of rebuilding the area. Um, and they're hopefully going to be able to go down um, next spring back to um, Louisiana to help rebuild after Hurricane Laura. Um, but there are Mardi Gras trips that take place in the fall or have taken place in the fall and, and, and over winter break and then over spring break as well. And students will go down, they'll work for an entire week drywalling or rebuilding or, or doing whatever sort of volunteer work is needed to help the community sort of rebuild after natural disasters. Um, the Mardi Gras has grown so big, there are about 500 students that participated in a Mardi Gras trip this past year, but it's grown so big that it also has sort of created a um, Milwaukee chapter as well that can really help rebuild after either natural disaster or um, I don't know but families that need help if they're struggling financially whatever it might be um, Marquette students are really again rooted in the, Mar the Marquette and Milwaukee community as well so there is a lot of stuff that happens at Marquette. Um, it definitely looks a little bit different this fall. Um, obviously, I am still working remotely. Um, our staff is, is working part-time on campus. Our students are mostly back on campus. About 50% of our classes are currently held in person. Again, significantly de-densified. Um, some, and then 50% of our classes are held virtually. So we're really still trying to find ways to build community, to host virtual events, virtual trivia, um, as well as find ways to social distance and then allow students to, to build community to learn um, more about one another and, and really bond um, during this time of college, which is so important. Before I get moving to some of the questions that you're submitting, I want to make sure I talk about our application. And I'll go ahead and, and address some of the questions we have about the College of Nursing as well. Um, what's really important to know is that Marquette, again, as a Catholic and Jesuit institution, we look at everything that you send in. So I really want to impress and share with you that I am, am one of 22 admission counselors in our office. I read applications. I read a couple hundred, uh, up to a thousand applications every single fall. Um, and all of our staff reads applications. We read them together. No application is seen by just one set of eyes. We all review applications and, and typically much more than once. Um, so keep that in mind and, and remember me as a real person, as an admission counselor who's reviewing your application. Anything that you send in and that you submit um, will be used to, to review your application. So if you feel as though COVID has particularly um, made an impact on your academic history or path this past year, you can definitely include that in your application. It's really helpful for me to know um, what, what sorts of things that your life is like so that we can see whether or not you're going to be a good fit on our campus. It's also really important for me to share with you that um, I am not in the business of denying students. I'm in the business of making sure that students are going to be successful on our campus. So again, submitting additional information to share ways in which you think you're going to be successful on our campus will really help your application um, stand out. So I want to make sure that I go through everything and, and I want to start by the fact or share the fact that we um, only require two things to apply to Marquette. Um, in 2018, we made the decision to go test optional. So well before um, the coronavirus hit, uh, we have been really researching practices, best practices to be a test optional institution. So we only require students to submit um, a um, application, which is available now either on our website or it's available on the Common App. Both applications are free um, and please don't fill out both. Just fill out one or the other application that will suffice. Um, the only other thing that we require is an official high school transcript. So you'll work with your um, high school guidance counselor or the registrar's office at your high school to make sure an official transcript is sent to Marquette so we can review your transcript with your entire application. 
If you do choose to submit an ACT or SAT score, that's definitely up to you. Um, you have the opportunity to do so. You can select that on the application box. Um, we do require an official ACT or SAT in order to review your application. For students that have questions about whether or not they should apply test optional or, or maybe they're trying to take the ACT again this fall, but they're not really sure how it's going to look, um, don't hesitate to call our office and I and, and my colleagues are more than happy to sort more than happy um, to walk you through your specific case and, and, and um, situation. But please know that an ACT or an SAT will not hurt your application. It will truly only help your application. Um, with that being said, um, we, our application is live and open now. We require just these two things, but we certainly encourage you to submit more as well. You can send in letters of recommendation, additional essays, and activities list is really helpful for us to see who you are outside the classroom. What do you do with your time? Do you have, do you work? Do you have significant family responsibility? Are you involved in clubs and sports and, and um, sort of other things outside the classroom? Definitely share those types of things with us as well. Um, we are on a rolling admission timeline, so the earlier you submit an application to Marquette, the earlier you receive a notification of admission, and then we, we, review, not, or we review applications on a rolling basis throughout the fall. Um, if you apply now or in the next couple of weeks, we'll review your application, um, and we won't send out any admission decisions before mid-October, around October 15th is when we'll send out our first admission decisions, and then from there on a rolling basis every two to three weeks. So if you apply, around November 1st, which is an early action deadline for many institutions. If you're submitting the Common App and all of your colleges are on the Common App um, and you want to use that application, you can submit it November 1st. You'll receive an admission decision two to three weeks after that. Um, we do have a priority deadline of December 1st, which means um, every student that applies by December 1st is given equal consideration for both um, admission and merit-based scholarship. So keep that in mind. Yes, the College of Nursing is the first college to close typically, um, the first college to fill, um, but you, as long as you apply by December 1st, you'll have equal consideration um, for um, scholarship and admission. Uh, Marquette does not have minimums or requirements. We are a very holistic reviewing um, sort of body. Um, we, uh, the average though, the middle 50% of students that were admitted um, last year had about a 3.5 unweighted GPA on a 4.0 scale um, and scored between a 25 and a 29 on the ACT. But we don't have minimums or, or requirements. Um, we certainly look at your whole academic profile. Um, the, college in which, the college in which you're applying to, the rigor of courses you've taken, the trends in your grades, have your grades gotten better throughout your high school career? Have they stayed the same? Have they been good? Maybe have your grades gotten worse? And if so, why is that the case? Um, we'll look at letters of recommendation, essays, like I mentioned before. All of that stuff will go into your application review. We, we do not have an automatic accept or deny process or protocol. So that's really important to know. Um, in terms of admission, so once a student has been admitted, um, the financial piece is, is the really big, big um, part of an admission decision or an application decision. Um, and I want to talk about these personal financial um, and academic fits. Um, Marquette, again, as a Catholic Jesuit institution, really believes that finding your college fit isn't necessarily just one thing. It's not just about, can I get into that institution? It's about all of these things. Can all three of these fit? Can you, can you get admitted to Marquette? Are you going to thrive at Marquette? Is Marquette going to be a good academic challenge for you? Financial fit is another really, really important piece for families. I mentioned merit scholarship. So all students that are admitted are automatically considered and reviewed for merit-based scholarship. We call it Peer Marquette Award at Marquette. Um, we don't have a grid-based system that says if you have a certain ACT and a certain GPA, you'll qualify for a certain amount of money. Um, but the average award given last year was about $13,000. It is renewable for four years. So for just for being admitted to Marquette, for, for um, being admitted, students are automatically qualified for that merit-based scholarship. However, that $13,000 often isn't enough to, to help offset the cost of a Marquette education. Um, tuition and room and board and fees and everything all told together, this, this year is about $59,000. So it is really important for students to find ways to offset the cost of a Marquette education. Um, and even though I find it to be incredibly valuable, every family has to make the decision best for them what, what a good financial fit is. I do encourage students and families to file the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, as Marquette has need-based aid that we can um, uh, award to students based on the need of their family due to their FAFSA. So the federal government will determine what your family can afford to spend on college. We'll get that information if you list Marquette on your FAFSA, and we'll provide a financial aid package typically in early February based on your family's need. 
We also have Marquette specific um, endowed and, and sponsored scholarships. So if you are really interested in Marquette and you want to apply for these additional scholarships at Marquette, that application will be due January 15th. So you can apply for additional scholarship. And these are special programs as well, like Urban Scholars or um, Burke Scholars, which is a, a program just for students from the state of Wisconsin. It's a full tuition scholarship program. Um, so those types of scholarships and scholarship programs will be available on our, our website, a separate application due January 15th. Um, but typically, all of the, the financial information that you need from Marquette will be decided by the beginning or mid March. Um, so you can apply anytime this fall, early into the winter. You'll get your admission decisions a couple of weeks after that, and then your financial aid piece will come um, to no later than mid March. So you'll have all of the pieces of information you need to make a decision on Marquette um, by the middle of March. And then our application decision deadline essentially is May 1. So you have until May 1 to decide whether or not Marquette is the place for you. And obviously at this time, you'll be considering a lot of other colleges, I hope, maybe looking at other institutions that are close to home or that are far away. Um, we don't know yet what, what the spring will look like, whether or not we'll be able to host our um, admitted student days uh, on campus in the spring. But Again, our staff is here to help answer questions and we'll do everything that we can to provide sort of that personal experience that we can, um, the feeling of Marquette, both virtually and uh, on campus. We are currently open for a very, very, very limited number of, of visits, um, and it's typically been easier for, for students in the state of Wisconsin to be able to come and visit. Um, we're open Monday through Friday. Um, except for Labor Day, obviously. Um, and we're typically open for three to four visits a day for up to four students per visit. Um, so we are really, really limited by COVID um, in our presentation space, but we're trying as best as possible to accommodate student tours and requests for tours. Um, but we absolutely have virtual visits available. You can meet virtually with a counselor one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you can take a, take a campus tour. There are tons of virtual resources available that were filmed by faculty um, and advisors and current students and alumni to sort of talk about their Marquette experience and share with you what the Marquette community truly is like. So even if you're not um, available to visit campus or able to visit campus in the next couple of months, there are still a lot of opportunities to sort of connect with, with Marquette people, with Marquette students and faculty and staff. Um, we also offer virtual department visits. So if you're interested in a particular college, like the College of Nursing or the College of Business or the College of Arts and Sciences, you can meet with a faculty or advisor um, within that college so that you can um, talk to them specifically about a program or what opportunities are available. Or maybe you're interested in going to dental school, so you have questions about how to best um, sort of start your academic, your undergraduate academic career off right to sort of um, propel you into dental school or medical school or whatever that might be. Every student is unique. There is no one way to be a Marquette student and, and we certainly don't expect you to try, um, but we're here to sort of meet you at where you're at on your journey. So I encourage you again to continue to connect with me or to um, connect with us in any way possible. I'm going to share our phone and text messages or text phone number is here as well. So if you have questions, you can certainly text them in. You can call our office. We're open 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Um, and then we are available on social media as well. So we do have students that take over our Snapchat and Instagram accounts on occasion. So if you're interested in learning more about the student experience, you can do that. Um, and there's also a page called My Marquette on YouTube. And these are just short 90 second to two minute videos that are filmed by current Marquette students um, that just kind of show what their life is like. You know, what's it like to live in this particular residence hall? What's it like to study for a physician assistant studies exam? What's it like to participate in Habitat for Humanity um, on a Saturday morning? Um, there are lots of other um, opportunities in, in that way too, to continue to connect. Um, Marquette.edu slash explore is the main Marquette, Marquette admissions website. Um, you can find more information about your particular admission counselor who may be meeting um, or maybe visiting your high school virtually this fall um, or, or who may be assigned to your school. Um, but you can also check the status of your application here. So if you've applied and you're still curious about the status of your application, you can check that there as well. So there is a ton of information and I realize you're all probably inundated. Um, with, with virtual resources and information, but please know we're also here. I, I much prefer to have a conversation with a real person who I can see on the other end rather than just looking at myself on a, on a little tiny screen. Um, so I, I really enjoy answering your questions and, and, and being a resource for you, certainly. 
Um, I want to add, um, sort of answer the question really quickly about esports in groups and clubs. And Marquette did announce um, two years ago um, that we were going to um, add a Division I esports pro program. Um, that did not happen this past spring, obviously, due to COVID. I have no idea what the status of the esports program is um, at Marquette, but we do have an esports club at the moment. Um, the goal is for it to be um, a Division I competitive program. I have no idea what that looks like, um, but probably now more than ever, it, it could be a really neat way to have a competitive um, division one sport. Um, oh, here's a little link to the My Marquette page. There's probably no sound here, um, but you can see this is just a small video of, of um, a current student who is going to do some, some service work. All right, that is the bulk of the information that I have to share with you on Marquette. If there are any other questions, oh gosh, hold on, I'll pause that. Um, if there are any other questions, you can certainly send them into the Q&A now. Um, otherwise, I will be here um, for another couple of minutes to just answer any of the questions that you have. I wanna thank you again for taking time to be here with me this afternoon. I hope you get a chance to enjoy the nice weather if, if you are in southeastern Wisconsin and have the beautiful weather this afternoon. I wish you all the best of luck as you start your, your hopeful senior year of high school, whether or not that's in person or virtually. Um, I know this is not what you were expecting, but um, I hope for the best and uh, hope that you can all stay positive. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tara. So we'll stay on for about another uh, five, 10 minutes if there's any questions that uh, you want to pop in the Q&A. Uh, but I will be ending this meeting around 3 ish um, just because then there is another session going on. So we do encourage students to def students and families uh, to definitely go on to uh, the WACAC website and definitely sign up for more of these um, online. So again, I'll leave the Q&A open for Tara to answer any additional questions, but we'll be ending the meeting um, about five-ish, uh, five to seven, eight minutes. All right, thanks so much for asking this question about our classes this fall. Um, so we, for this fall, um, are, are planning to do, or are currently doing, our students started on campus um, last week, Wednesday. So this is, um, they're over a full week in class. They moved in um, the weekend of the 22nd. We are sort of a hybrid of virtual and in-person. So the majority of our students are living on campus, though our residence halls have been de-densified. So um, many students are living in single dorm rooms. Some are living in uh, double dorm rooms that have been made or meant for three or four people. Um, so there has been more space added to the residence halls, essentially. Um, and then about 50% of our classes are offered in person, again, though very significantly de-densified, so um, to allow for social distancing guidelines. We have also added class space in non-traditional classrooms. So our student union is hosting classes in, in some bigger spaces, ballrooms, um, that can host more people as, uh, in a more spread out fashion. Um, and then 50% of our classes are held virtually. Some classes are held in a hybrid fashion that um, Students might meet once a week in person and then have some sort of online component. Um, but every Marquette student has a mix of in-person and virtual classes for the fall 2020. Um, this is our plan for the entire fall semester. Uh, we'll go ahead and reevaluate that fall. And, and I should share too, marquette.edu slash coronavirus um, is the website that is sort of our coronavirus dashboard. We have a um, dashboard of cases on our campus for both students and faculty and staff, as well as virtual resources and then our reopening plan. Um, it was really, really, really detailed and structured. I think the current phase that we're in um, is 40 or 50 pages long. Um, that's really detailed with our residence halls and dining halls and classroom spaces and student organizations um, and, and, and all of that. So there's a, obviously, it looks very different than it would have um, traditionally, but Marquette really believes that a, a Catholic Jesuit institution our education is, is sort of being in person is, is sort of foundational to the experience. Um, so the hope is that students are, are going to be taking some responsibility, um, being smart this fall, staying socially distanced, wearing their masks. Masks are required on our campus um, and, and hopefully everyone will stay safe and healthy. Um, GPA um, to apply, we again, don't have a minimum or a requirement and I encourage students 
um, if they have specific questions about their, their GPA or concerns, um, they can either add additional information in their application to sort of explain maybe what happened if they're concerned about a particular semester or their overall GPA. But on average, a Marquette student has a 3.5, 3.6 unweighted GPA. Um, sort of that high B average, A average, A minus average um, is, is sort of the typical middle 50%, the average Marquette student. Um, we do not have a minimum, so we don't have a, a cutoff for the lowest GPA we'll accept. Um, but about, you know, half of our students are on either ends of the spectrum. Um, what was I going to say about GPA? Oh, um, I should share too that we do review applications um, and GPAs and high school transcript incredibly thoroughly, uh, regardless of whether or not you submit uh, a ACT or not, um, and that we do look at a weighted GPA as well as an unweighted GPA. So we unweight all of the GPAs we receive so that we can kind of look at where a GPA is relative to another student. Then we also add in a rigor score as well so we can see you know, if you've taken significantly rigorous classes, but maybe gotten Bs or a C in one of those classes, um, we know that you've really challenged yourself. You've really tried um, hard to do well and to, 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 to learn more, um, to take classes that are more alike college classes. Um, but we do want to see too, if, if a student is getting an A in a, in a really rigorous class, um, obviously their unweighted GPA would be different for a student that is getting um, an A or their weighted GPA would be different from the student that's getting an A in a, a less rigorous class, if that makes sense. Um, so all are important. All right, just so you know, students, I'm not seeing any other questions. So um, if there's a last minute question, you can add it now. Um, otherwise, we will go ahead and make room for the next um, session. All right, so thank you so much, Tara. Looks like um, there's no last minute questions. So I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting. Thank you very much, students, for attending. Um, hopefully, we get to see you at a couple other sessions. But again, I'm going to end this meeting now. Um, and thank you so much, everybody, for attending. Have a good rest of your day.